review videos because being a my, my occupation is real hazardous for that because I'm only really allowed to talk about the equipment that I use. So you would have seen I reviewed the Factor Ostro. Um, it's kind of about it. So every so often I'll get Chanel to review something and, and I'm still trying to get Chanel to review something because it's been a while and, and she's pushing back on it. So I, if you are with me and wanting Chanel to review kind of anything, like let us know. But a couple of weeks ago, being the tech loving, eagle eyed Instagram fiend that I am, I clocked a kind of a, a, an Instagram account that was linked with Black Income Factor, but uh, wasn't like them officially. And then it was, they posted a five spoke carbon composite wheel. I was like, that's weird. So I, I screenshot it quickly. I sent a message to the engineer at Factor, Graham, who is someone I talk to quite regularly about tech. And I said, hey, this five spoke. And he was like, what five spoke? And just denied it, flat out denied it. And then I was like, look, I have photographic evidence, showed him and he was like, oh, that's not meant to be out yet. And we do have a five spoke. He didn't deny it then. So I then said, look, can I, can I have a go? And can I review it? Because it's a pointless will. For me, it is an utterly pointless will. So I was like, can I have a set? And can I, uh, can I review them and ride them? And I was like, actually, I have a sportif that would be perfect because it's not UCI sanctioned, so I can use them. And so here we are. A set turned up and I've been using them and I'm here to tell you about them. So before you think, look, I'm going to switch this video off because here's a Black Ink sponsored rider talking about a Black Ink product that uh, he probably has to say good things about then. Well, yes, I am a Black Ink sponsored rider and I am going to review a Black Ink product. But like I said, this is a waste of a wheel for me um, because I can't use it or I can't race on it. So uh, Factor have given me the opportunity to be completely honest with you, which, you know, if you've been following this channel for a while, I hope you'll appreciate that is something that always comes from this channel, and that is honesty. So I am gonna give you a flat out, honest review of this black ink five spoke wheel. And maybe a bit of validation for my review is that I wouldn't be reviewing these if I couldn't tell a difference. Now, between wheels, unless a wheel is at the high end or the low end, like we were given two sets of training wheels with Factor. I train on a set of Black Ink 60s, which are very good wheels. And I also have a set of steel rimmed, like a gazillion spoked, like low end Shimano wheels as well. I can tell the difference between them. Telling the difference between the, say the 30s or the 60s, like I struggle telling the difference between uh, my father's got a set of head 40s and like specialized Roval uh, whatever's, I would struggle to tell the difference. Being, and I would I'd be inclined to say that most people would struggle to tell the difference there as well. However, I can tell the difference with these and for reasons I'll go into probably isn't overly surprising. So, but for validation, what I do do is I push my equipment to its limit in terms of, in terms of performance for a start. Um, I mean, I don't put gripal level watts through equipment, but I, I ride for a long time and I corner hard and my maintenance levels are not top notch. I, I keep my equipment maintained to the point where it keeps me on the road, but not to the point where my bike rolls out the door every day, sparkling and shiny. So what I'm saying is what you'll get with this review is, is a world tour rider putting these through their paces. I did a sportif on these. I've done, I've racked up about 17 hours on these so far. Um, I've done seated sprints. I've done uh, standing sprints. Uh, I've done a 150K sportif with four and a half thousand meters climbing and possibly more importantly, four and a half thousand meters descending with a bunch of switchbacks. 
and I've ridden them to the cafe as well. So in those 17 hours, I've put them through just about everything possible except for setting them up. I, the tires came pre-inflated, tubeless has been set up, and if you've watched my tubeless video, you'll know that, well, I probably wouldn't have done 17 hours training on them if I had to set up tubeless tires. So anyway, we'll get into it. So as I said, I use them on the Sportif, and Team DSM's Chris Hamilton saw them, and he referred to them as sick hoops. So that was the first, that was the first win for these wheels. You know, another world tour rider, you know, really sort of took note. And, and intrigue, I think, like, because they're, they're different. I mean, we've seen five-spoke wheels in the before, before. Probably the most famous five-spoke wheel is the Mavic 5, but that is a out-and-out -out aero wheel, whereas this is, this is a lightweight wheel leaning towards aero. So what these are, these are a solid spoke, handcrafted, specifically designed one piece rim and spoke blade construction. And they really are black ink taking a no holds barred approach to the wheel, uh, which I think is great because mostly manufacturers have to uh, work within the constraints of the UCI rules and regs, whereas these are not. These, this is just, in my mind, this is a wheel to go out and enjoy riding your bike. Uh, they're tubeless ready, uh, so they're a clincher. I don't believe they come in a tubular option um, and a complete set weighs in at 1,118 grams. Now I did some digging and that is marginally heavier than a lightweight Mylenstein My Milan 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 Stein, uh, wheel set but bearing in mind these are uh, disc brake, these are tubeless ready which notoriously adds some weight to uh, a wheel set so actually that's coming in pretty light and these are aero and we'll talk about that soon. So we'll talk about how they ride because I think that that for me was the biggest takeaway from these wheels was how they made me feel on my bike, which isn't something I think about much. It's how I feel physically, like how much power I can put through the pedals, but I've never kind of stopped to think how does my how does the riding experience of riding my bike feel? And you know, I, I had some ideas of how this would feel. Some of them uh, came to fruition, some of them surprised me. The first thing that surprised me was the handling. There's two reasons for that. The first reason is this is a much stiffer wheel than a traditionally spoked wheel because it's a solid construction. There's no spokes are needing to be tensioned. This comes out of a mold like this and there's no flex in it. There's no tension in the spoke. There's none of that. So there was two things to come from. I think that construction is so turning into a switchback it just happened quicker. And like I said, I can't, I'm not one to be able to tell the difference between a set of wheels, but I immediately noticed the turn in on these was, was sharper. It was just more reactive. It, it just happened faster. I got to the apex just a little bit faster and it kind of took me by surprise and then I got used to it and it was great. So that, that was the first one. And uh, that's unsurprising because there's less absorption of what's happening between the hub and the rim and the tire, so that's not a surprise. Yeah, what was surprising for me though was uh, slipping. Now, I, I tend to stay away from the limit of grip of, of tires and bikes because I think, as anyone will know, there's not, there's not much margin for error when it comes to sliding a bike. In The ones that get away with it are either supremely talented or just lucky. But I did have a little slip on these whilst pushing it in the Sportif on a switchback, chasing Chris Hamilton downhill not uphill because that's a non-event and the back slipped and what I noticed was is it what I thought would happen because the wheel is stiffer is I thought it would be much snappy and it would all happen and it, I'd be gone in a flash. What happened was the opposite I could kind of feel it it happened a bit slower and what I think is then happening then is when you're loading up the wheel uh, in a corner you're obviously loading up the grip of the tire then you're loading up the spokes and then there's flex and then when that grip brakes, traction, everything kind of releases and springs and then it's all like, whoa, 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 that's what just happened. And with these, I think what's happening is like the automotive industry where nobody uses a spoked wheel. Mo MotoGP bikes do not use a like laced spoke wheel. Cars use a solid rim as well. Yes, they have damping and suspension, but that works differently. What I think is happening is instead of 
feeling what's happening in the wheel and the tire, you're removing the feeling of the wheel and then it's just tire, which ultimately is your limit of grip. So for me in a corner, it's giving me more predictability as to what the bike's gonna do. And that surprised me, like I said, I didn't think that was what was gonna happen, but it was. So with braking was the one thing that surprised me because I, I felt like I locked up the rear a little bit easier than what I would have done on traditionally spoked rims. I think again, that's down to the stiffness of the rim and removing that uh, absorption from the, from the spokes, that sort of twisting from the spokes. And so I definitely felt like I could anchor more on the front and I could feather the rear more. And I'd have to think more about that than perhaps I would do on a traditionally spoke bike. And I'm, it's not a bad thing, it's just, it's something that I encountered was having to think more about my braking. But ultimately, braking's gonna be marginally more efficient on these. Not a great deal of difference, but marginally more efficient. <laughs> I've, I've spoken a lot about how stiff these wheels are and what you might be thinking is what's coming up through the road into the handlebars and it is exactly what you'd think. There is more vibration coming up um, through the road. You are feeling the road more, which is a good thing. What I did make sure, and that was what Mike Woods used these wheels on the Tour de France rest day and that was one thing he noticed. I mean, albeit Mike, Tour de France rest day for him was not about testing these wheels out. That was about going and doing just a one hour easy ride. And I think what he said he noticed was more vibrations and stuff coming up through the handlebars. Now, cyclists, even in the world tour, pump the tires up too hard. I'm not saying Mike did or our mechanics, I'm sure they had them right. And even with the right tire pressures, I could feel the road more. And again, that's not a bad, I like to feel the road, but what I would say, and it kind of just doesn't go for these wheels, it goes for anyone is, get your tire pressures right, because I think notoriously everyone runs them too hard. And I promise you having a tire that is too hard will cost you more watts than a tire that is too soft. So there's a great, I'll put it in the link below, there's a great way of calculating your tire pressure. You don't need to pay anything, you don't, you, you sign up to a newsletter to get the full access to the tire pressure calculator. So I made sure the tire pressures were right. And I think on these wheels, that's even more crucial than on any others. So we'll talk about the aero because when I saw a picture of these, of these wheels and it was a side-on picture of a full bike with the wheels in, I was like, Black Ink, what are you doing? What are you doing? It looked like a ginormous round spoked wheel and it kind of looked like something a five-year-old would be riding on his BMX. Uh, or someone's commented, it looked like they should be on a fixie. I, like I said, I, I asked Graham um, a bit about them, but I was more like, can I use them? And they said, yes. And then they turned up and then I saw it. I saw the, the aero and I'm no physicist or aerodynamicist, but I've spent enough in a wind tunnel and I feel like I, when I saw these wheels, I was like, ah, oh, yeah, okay, now nah, I get it. What they have done is, it's a shape that's, come, I've, I've drawn a little picture here. It's called a NACA profile. It's got something to do with NASA. I'm not exactly sure, but what the uh, bike industry tends to do is chop the end off, which is commonly known as a cam tail. The reason for that is twofold. One is UCI regs, they have a three to one limit. So something can't be three times, more than three times longer than it is wide. So for airflow, when it's a perfect profile, the trick is to keep the air attached and, and chopping the end off, they found still, there is a slight aero penalty, but like not much to just having like say a round spoke. So. So just that shape is not gonna be as good as that complete shape, but it's not gonna be a million miles off. Now, if that complete shape is used, then it has to be wide enough for the structural integrity, but then it's just gonna be massive, so they chop the end off. And now what I've done is overlaid this with a very rough diagram of CDA, which is drag, and mass, which is weight. Where they chop the end off, was that crossover point between where the drag starts dropping off, but also where the ma mass starts picking up. And so when I saw these, I could see in each spoke, there is that cam tail shape. So it is, it's a teardrop shape with the end chopped off. And that's, that keeps the weight down and keeps them aero. Now, the other thing was at the end of the spoke, it's much thin, it's about a centimeter, 10 millimeters thinner here than it is at the hub. and. So it's quite a different shape. If, if anything, they've cut the tail off later 
at the end of the spoke than they have at the start. And the reason for that is, much like a tree, he just, Graham described it the same as a tree. The tree, all the strength is at the base. That's where the torque is coming from, so you want the stiffness to be here. Now, secondly to that, on the end of the wheels is where the wheel is, where the spoke is traveling fastest. So you want this section to be as aero as possible. So that is why you have a beefy spoke down the bottom, still with the cam tail shape, but a much sleeker spoke at the rim. So these wheels are much more aero than they look. And the other thing about it being so beefy around the hub is obviously this hub has had to be bonded inside the wheel rather than your regular lace spokes. I asked Graham, like, again, going down to the, the tree-like structure, he said there's also, there's to help prevent the peel stress going on between hub and wheel. Basically to stop the hub eventually breaking and spinning inside the wheel is why they've made around here so, so beefy as well as the rigidity of the wheel. Another note, as with kind of all black ink wheels, comes with the ceramic speed bearings, which is just a nice touch. Right, so we're getting to the price. Um, it's steep. It's 2,600 pounds for, for the full set. Yeah, that's not a small amount of money. And when I saw this on the website, because only that's it's 1,000 pounds more than the black ink 60s, which are a very good wheel. Like, God, that's a lot of money for a wheel that you can't use in a UCI race. And I hit, bluntly hit straight back at Graham and I said, why? Why is these, why are these so hideously expensive compared with your Black Ink 60s, who, which are a, a top end wheel? And he, yeah, he explained it. He said, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty simple. Volume and complexity. Okay, guy, can you go into more detail? He said, okay, right, so, when you build a bike frame or a wheel, you have to create a, a mold um, that the wheel is then uh, laid inside and you have your product. It's how most carbon composite stuff are made. And the mold for this is far bigger than a regular wheel because you've got, you've got much more going on than just a rim. Then he said the actual, the size of the mold is the same, almost identical to the size of the mold needed to create a frame like the Ostro or the Slick or the new Hanzo. So that was the first thing. The second thing he said is the surface area. There's a lot more of it. There's more raw carbon, there's more, um, the same painting and sanding process is, there's just more wheel to process. And the last thing he said about why these are more expensive is the heating and cooling process. So when you lay the carbon into a mold, you heat it up, you cool it down, and then it's like a rigid structure. And that is relative to the depth. I mean, that was good enough for me. I was like, okay, that, that for me explains the, the grand more that you're gonna spend. And yeah, I was fine with that on your behalf. <laughs> yeah, so whilst this is not a paid promotion, like I'm not, uh, I haven't received, I've got to give these wheels back. I. I'm not being paid to promote these. And I said to Factor, if I did not like the wheels, this video wouldn't exist. What Factor did then say when I said, I love the wheels, I wanna review them, is they said, we will provide a discount code um, for a limited time. But the difference with this one is, it applies to all wheels on Black Ink's website. Uh, so the 30s, the 60s, the disc, the three spoke, the 80s, the five, I think that's it. I think that's their full range. There's a 10% discount code. 5% of that discount will go to Little Bleeders, which is wonderful of Black Ink. But I don't want you to think that I'm reviewing these wheels for that. I'm not. I just really bloody like these wheels. And I've not got excited about much tech outside of TT um, tech for a long time. But this is uh, these are one of them. So in Black Ink, they're a small company. They're not, they're not big. And... You know, it's, it's massive that they can do that um, alongside this video. Like I said, I do have to give them back and I really don't want to. So I might just keep forgetting to hand them back to Black Ink. When they say, hey, Alex, those wheels haven't turned up at our HQ yet. I'll be like, ah, oh, sorry, guys. I, uh, I need to get to the post office when in reality I'm busy doing six hour rides on them. And yeah, just enjoying them. Thanks for watching.